All right, so we got every Warhammer Fantasy faction explained. So good to be let's go, man. Controversial statement. I like when people get into Warhammer. It's always a joy to have more people to play with and interact with in the hobby space. He's it's talking a about me. me. To try and convert someone, anyone, into accepting that the Eldar are actually really cool and interesting, and please, just for five minutes, stop saying elf bad. But speaking of elves, they are bad. There's a wave of people that first learn about Warhammer. There's always one thing in common with them. None of them realize there's more to Warhammer than Space Marines, Tyranids, and Spikier Space Marines. True, there's that's me. There's a whole me. other pair of settings that also exist, and they just fly right under the radar half the time. And this sucks, because the best Warhammer setting is right there. Yeah, GW ended it, but then it came back. And if you don't want to, you don't even have to collect thousands of dollars of minis to play with this one. Kind of. Warhammer Fantasy has been around longer than even 40k. It's had its ups, it's had its downs, it got blown up for a little bit, but Wait, thanks for to the war, Vermintide, and the constant nagging of the community, you can once again play in the old world. With elves, dwarves, and humans as standard, but also some okay. more out there races, such as magical frogs, rats, and Walmart shoppers. Rats! Not enough people know oh, about them. Oh, Not nearly enough. And not nearly enough people learn that this setting is even a thing. So I'm going to be doing my part today. Today, I'm going to learn you all about every faction in Warhammer Fantasy. Some of them had extensive army lists and plot relevance, <laughs> some of them languished when none of updated army books for years on end, and some of them until recently were relegated to about three pages of background lore. Doesn't matter, we're doing it all. If you can conceivably consider it an actual faction, they'll be here. Think of it as a companion to this video. Okay. That one was me trying to overview the setting as a whole, and this one is about the groups of people in the setting. So I'm a real YouTuber a now. Fantasy <laughs> and see what all that nonsense about them having THE Warhammer is all about. But you're about to start listening to me list off all kinds of factions. Let's and do you go. know what you could be listening to me with? Raycon and their Everyday Earbuds, the sponsor of this video. Raycon's Everyday Earbuds are some of the finest available on the market, and they've got a new and improved Yeah, not how we are whenever it comes to sponsors. We usually don't right skip the sponsors because, you know, it's out of respect. So I'm going to just so talk over it. Else but uh, I did not know that no uh, Warhammer Back Factions was actually uh, like, Because you know, sometimes the outside world uh, just needs to take a step back for a bit. And a new sleek ergonomic okay, so design to make them But yeah, I didn't know uh, that Ray, uh, I own Bra 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 cool I didn't know that Warhammer Facts was actually. Nice um, I've got them colored in a nice purple. I didn't know they were like, you know, um, oh my god. What's the word? That they existed longer than 40k. Options, I didn't know that. There's plenty of colors to know. choose from. You know what's better I think than it should that? Be done now. 32 hour battery life that gets 90 minutes of battery per 10 minutes of charging. I forget to charge my headphones. Okay, it's still going. That actually looks like it's going to be a little fire. Bro, shout out to everybody who's been watching all the videos. You guys can just charge them up for a little bit. World, I'm trying to. Like, you know, sit here and like distract you guys from this ad real quick. But you, listen, I don't want to just wait. Quality. That's his face. The world and get into the swing of things. This feels this weird. I'm not, I feel like I'm not supposed to be seeing his face right now. This is this is this is crazy. But even with your own shopping needs, you can still I've never had Raycons, Raycons before, by the way. So I don't know. Should I use uh, should I should I buy the Raycons? Use code uh, Pancrease Network. Should I do off your Raycon purchase? I think the ad's done. They're already half the price of other brands. And with the link, you can get them at an even better price. Spice up how you listen to music, podcasts, and more with Raycons Everyday Earbuds. Guys, like how I did now that. then let's talk about where it all began here we go orcs and that's orcs spelled with a c by the way not a k but across the board the greenskins of warhammer fantasy aren't that different from the ones in 40k which is why we're starting with them they like to fight they're mushroom people they're green if you took an orc from 40k right, and put him in a greenskin tribe in fantasy he probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference might wonder why no one has a decent shooter hanging around but he'd be content with his life regardless he might even be happier because these orcs have characters like grimgore instead of gaskull there are no thinking and tactics for Grimgore, only beating everything near him to death. The Greenskins used Makes to have sense. some pretty different lore, being closer to D&D &D than anything else. They had half-orcs, and they didn't reproduce with mushroom spores. Then as time went on, that was moved away from, and eventually we came to where we are now in the Old World. That being that the orcs hopped a ride with the Old One's ships when they came to the Warhammer Fantasy World. More on them later. From there, okay. they naturally began spreading out across the entire world. The Old Ones and their servants did their best to get rid of the Orcs, as they did all other races they weren't quite fond of, but you can't get rid of the Orcs once they're on a planet. It's just not possible. So nowadays, if oh, you wow. wander around a given area long enough, chances are you'll find some greenskins kicking about, making things worse for whoever lives there. Wow. The Orcs themselves are one of the biggest similarities between the two settings. The biggest guy is in charge of the tribe, and if you get a real big boss, he might be in charge of multiple tribes. Oh, and when you okay. get a really big boss, you can get a whole proper wah going. When this happens, you usually get a whole lot wow. of dead humans and dwarfs. True. Painting something red still makes it go faster, painting it blue makes it luckier, and can block arrows from killing the blue painted orc. 
and they still love looting. Not nearly as much as in 40k, but you can always find an orc in a tribe wearing dwarf plate armor, her wielding a human greatsword he grabbed off. They got corpse. armor? They Why do you have big some more things savage got armor? brethren who judge other orcs for using things like basic tools or digging a pit to shit in rather than just letting it drop where you stand? But aside from being a bit more magical, those orcs aren't really. Hey, at least they're sanitary. They dig in pits and stuff to use the bathroom? Okay. Okay, that's actually pretty sanitary. I. I Wow, I wasn't actually expecting that. All that different. Where you get the biggest change, though, is with the goblins. Oh, look at his nose! Okay, Grots are an entire species Ooh. with a lot of relevance to the orcs. You'll get one like Makari once in a blue moon who are allowed to be in the shadow of the spotlight of a far more famous orc. But the goblins in fantasy are an actual threat all by and themselves. And they knows it's sure, crazy. Sure, they're still cowardly and will refuse a stand-up fight unless they outnumber the enemy 40 to 1. Sure, they're still kicked around by the orcs and are used to do all the manual construction stuff. And sure, they're still slightly smarter than the orcs, so anything resembling any actual construction or research is done by them. But every now and then, not often, Ooh. but every now and then, <laughs> you the average goblin British who's person. cut above the rest. And when that happens, everyone's in trouble. The goblins are cunning little buggers. They know in a straight-up fight they're going to lose so they'll wait till the biggest orc around is sleeping and oh they're throat, like hyenas or poison his food or convince him there's something shiny in a nearby cave filled with hungry trolls and sometimes if they're really insane they'll overdose on literally magic mushrooms and when they come back to reality they've slaughtered every orc in charge in a manic frenzy now instead of a big green moron who just about knows which way is forward leading the army you have someone like Skarsnik leading an orc army a green little sun Tzu who's gonna run circles around you and your entire military oh or wow you can get one that pretty Pretty much just lucks into the position like Grom the Paunch, hallowed be his girth. Instead of being clever, his he just girth. got what incredibly lucky and was forced to eat troll meat. Instead of exploding, which is normally what happens when you do that, he just kept growing alongside it. Three things happened. One, he got so incredibly fat he'd beat rival orcs by sitting on them. Two, what? he became a legend among goblins everywhere. The alpha male fantasy they all wish they could be. And three, he nearly ended the world by sailing from the equivalent of the Middle East or Africa. Dang, to the call him Christopher of the Columbus. Stabilizing the high elves. If you like Grotz but wish they could, you know, do anything important ever, maybe take a look at the goblins. Their history really isn't anything special, though, mostly because they're green skins and what you see is what you get. Usually, they beat each other up. Every now and again, one of them beats up enough orcs that he convinces them all to go beat someone else up instead. This continues until that war boss is killed, and then the orcs disband and go back to beating each other up again. Oh, Some wow. evil dwarfs like to use them as slaves, and when they tried to make bigger, stronger, and smarter orcs to use as slaves, they immediately learned why that was a bad idea when the orcs revolted. If you like being mean and green, you'll like the orcs. Oh, and I don't like them. thing I nearly forgot, they love to dance. Warzag may be the prophet oh, of the Orc Gods first, but he's a hell of a dancer sexy. second. Now let's get out of the get realm it. of similarities oh, okay. and into some things fantasy really okay, does He dances like Donkey Kong. When the Old Ones showed up, the planet they arrived on was ideal for creating the ultimate weapon to fight chaos. Of course, they still had to create it. So to do that, they started by moving the planet closer to the sun to warm it up, which pissed off a lot of things on it, like the dragons. Speaking of, there were a lot of races. How do you move the planet? Wait, 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 wait. When did we start doing that? Wait, 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 wait a minute. Hold on. Bro, they don't even do that in, in, in 40K, right? They don't even, <laughs> yo, yo, <laughs> bro, who wakes up at, bro, bro, I bet that dude woke up like at 7 a.m. The sun hasn't even popped out yet. He's like, ooh, bro, bro, bro. It's, a little, it's a little cold out here. Let me, let me see if I can, let me see if I can. <clears throat> bro, this man, bro, 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 this man legit moved the entire earth. Hey, bro, he moved his world to the sun. Are you sick? That's crazy. They don't even do that in 40k, I think. On the planet that wouldn't really like to share the room with the old one's creation. That's, that's so to ridiculous. help them with the legwork as well as get rid of all those fellas, the old ones created the Lizardmen. They also created most of the other playable races in the setting. So unless otherwise stated, assume all these factions started out as the test two babies of the old ones in one way or another. The Lizardmen were not this ultimate weapon against chaos, although they were still pretty good at fighting. You know how I said the orcs resisted extermination by the old ones? That was just them who managed it. Everyone else fell under a tide of angry lizards, dinosaurs, or angry lizards riding dinosaurs. With that small little bit of genociding out of the way, the old ones set about making the world fit their needs. The lizardmen were their chief assistants, and to be the best secretaries they could possibly be, the old ones made them in several different flavors. All of them with a the dash of Mesoamerican cultures thrown in, because if you have the option to have Aztec lizard riding dinosaurs, you have no good reason not to take it. First you have the Slan. The Slan are the best wizards in all the world. 
world. They may be big fat toad people, but the first generation ones were the ones who changed the entire planet's orbit, moving around where it needed to be in space. Moving down the generational line, they did get weaker, but that's highly relative. I mean, that second makes sense. Second generation Slon could only cause entire mountain ranges to suddenly appear at the drop of a hat. Oh, These y'all are the but... who directly worked with the old ones. And you guys' powers is garbage. Will to the rest of them. Next, you have the Saurus. Stupid people might think that since the Lizardmen are a Bronze Age civilization at best, they're not much of a threat. Then an eight-foot-tall monster from the Cretaceous period clubs you to death with an obsidian axe, and you find out just how the Saurus were able to depopulate an entire planet. These were the generals of the Lizardmen armies. They were bred for war and only war. They're pretty straightforward, and all their characters have the same background of bread to kick ass, but this is Warhammer. That's a feature, not a bug, and they break it down to its simplest possible form. Next are the skinks. They're little chibi gecko axolotl things that do to the day-to-day -day management of lizardman society. You need a building planned out or to do basic diplomacy, you send the skinks. They're also skirmishers. When the trees start speaking great planes, it's the skinks doing it. They've even got their own god all to themselves, Sotek. It was a bit of a controversy when he came around at first, but the rest of the Lizardmen seemed content enough to let him be worshipped. Finally, we have the Croxagors. They're alligator men. They build the buildings and gator death. Bro, he looked like Killer Croc from Batman Arkham. That's it, but that's all they need to do. When Chaos first came and the Old Ones fled, the oh, Lizardmen nah. had to figure out how to not only survive, but continue the Old Ones' work in their absence, which they kind of sort of have been pulling oh no nah, that's bit. a big they boy right the there i can't lie to you cost of almost all the first slon and most of their spawning pools turning them into a very numerically disadvantaged race not that this stops them from still sometimes rampaging across the world but they are largely held up in the jungles of lustria nowadays also known as south america because warhammer fantasy is just earth if someone with really shaky hands drew a map of it <laughs> they're isolationists the slon will spend centuries at a time meditating on the few plaques the old ones have left and they really oh. hate when tourists come to lustria because it's usually to steal those plaques. They're all gold, you see, because gold oh. doesn't tarnish or rust. Convenient for writing things down in a jungle, less convenient when all the warm bloods come to steal the shiny stuff. If you see a Lizardman army, you're either screwed because the Great Plan dictates your death, or screwed because you're somewhere they don't think you should be. Very simple faction, but again, that's a positive. Dang, I can't Sometimes travel? That's crazy. Is the way to go. Also, the Empire of the Man. Imperium, but not as awful. These guys are the default protagonist faction. They're the strongest nation of men in the world, and that's no meaningless boast here, because there's actual competition they have in that department, unlike the Imperium. They formed about 2,500 years prior to the setting's modern day, when a pretty cool dude named Sigmar was born. Sigmar had a dream, uniting the scattered tribes of barbarian into one unified nation of mankind, to drive back the darkness and bring peace to the land. He did this chiefly by beating up everyone who disagreed with him, but in fairness, most of them deserved it. If this sounds familiar, let me just remind you that this guy was here first. Plus, Sigmar realized that outright killing everyone just because they disagree with was you that the emperor? Was that the boy? That will lead to problems later down the line. So he settled for only beating them up. Sigmar didn't just beat up people though. He also beat up a lot of orcs, like a whole lot of orcs. Oh. So many orcs that the dwarfs swore eternal friendship with mankind because if Sigmar is so kick-ass, surely the rest of humanity can't be that bad either. He united most of the tribes of man in the area. Oh, he was the boy. He was the, the guy. Leader, and formed the Empire of Man. Fifty years later, he just up and left. A little bit after that, he became a god, and the Empire soon worshipped Sigmar as the chief god of their pantheon. Oh, the snap. The Empire is pretty unique as far as fantasy factions go. Usually a fantasy setting will reach the medieval era and then very explicitly never move past that for the next trillion years of its history. The Empire is a trillion years when is Sigmar crazy. Was doing his thing, it was barely the Iron Age. The dwarfs giving them steel weapons every now and then was considered the height of technological advancement. Nowadays, 2,500 years later, the Empire right, has yeah. tanks. Good tanks? Yeah. Look, for a Renaissance Age civilization, tanks are pretty damn impressive no matter how good they actually are. True. They have factories, I mechanical agree. horses, and countless other things that make you wonder if the book you're reading was put in the fantasy section by mistake. They also have wizards who scam people out of $50 for the thrill of it, politicians who constantly- Hey, scamming somebody out of a phone bill is crazy. First of all, my bad. Scamming somebody out of an internet bill is absolutely diabolical, especially in, in, in these times. That's crazy, man. You need to be wrangled. That's by crazy. The competent guy in the entire government. That's a whole bill right there. That's to arm the entire Holy Roman Empire with. 
They're still normal people, though. The three things that make the Empire great aren't genetically modified super soldiers, or lost technological secrets from a golden age, or even the direct intervention of their gods. It's faith, steel, and gunpowder. A whole lot of each. Give a man a halberd, a cause to fight for, and his friends by his side, and it turns out you can push back even the most determined of evil murder vikings time and time again. Most Warhammer fantasy books follow the Imperial characters around, and you get a good feel for just how fleshed out this land is through them. You've got the Heartlands, sure, places like Altdorf, where it's interconnected with the wider world, magic runs through the very city through its colleges of magic, and elves and dwarves can be seen regularly. Then you have backwater shitholes like Ostermark, where the people are outnumbered by everything nearby that wants to kill them, and guns are still a scary black magic invention for a good half the population. Or Averland, whose most noticeable trait is that they hunt halflings for sport there. There's halflings in the Empire, by the way. They can vote on the next Emperor because they baked a previous one a really good meal. They also had a civil war over pie. Don't be a halfling in Averland. You're gonna decorate someone's mantelpiece sooner or later. Of course, this is still Warhammer, fantasy or not. Sure, I said it's not as awful as the Imperium, but it still has witch hunters who will burn you alive for being a wizard, or being a mutant, or just for being a bit too ugly, because uh. that's also a sign of chaos mutation. And it's still a Renaissance Age civilization. What? For 90% of people, this means it's a medieval civilization, but you might Are see you more serious? statues and paintings than your ancestors did. You're still probably gonna die off the water making you poop too much. They're bordered by the undead, beastmen are everywhere once you leave the city limits, and worst of all, they have people who have sex with horses for neighbors. The Empire is constantly Bro. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. They make you have wait, wait, they be doing what with what horses? They whoa, whoa, whoa. They they, they whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Horses? Like the animal? You talking about those? No shot. No, 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 no. Hey, hey, hey. If y'all are doing that, if y'all are doing that, then fantasy might be worse than 40K. There's no shot. Y'all be doing that with the horses? Th that's, that's what y'all like? On the defense. That's Orcs, nasty work. From chaos, from that's nasty work right there. Kind of chaos, I didn't listen. Anyone else who's I didn't know that was y'all bag. But the average citizen of the empire will do their part to keep the hordes at bay. And at the end of the day, they did this for 2,500 years until the authors decided reality itself had to go, which is a pretty good track record. They're a human, relatable nation. Like if the Imperial Guard got to actually be the main characters of 40K instead of Space Marine 9001, model on sale now for $60. It's grounded with people having normal struggles, but also fantastical with wizards and monsters being everywhere. They do have one ultimate ace in the hole though, the reigning emperor, Karl Franz. The best statesman in the old world, the guy who wields the Warhammer. You know, the one, the actual real-life Warhammer logo. That's his, and he's very good at using it. He's oh, the okay. kind of politician who could convince you into giving him everything you own and leave you thinking you got the better deal, but also the kind of person who wouldn't do that to you. He's got everyone's interest Aww. in heart, and overall, this guy's the best emperor in Warhammer. Not Warhammer fantasy, Warhammer in general. Kiss my ass, corpse worshippers. This one can walk, talk, and beat you to death in the name of the Empire. If you like relatable folk... He got a point. I mean, bro, he, he can he, he can walk and talk, bro. The Emperor in 40K, bro, man, he, bro, he got like a thousand tubes connected to him, bro. They feeding that man a thousand men a day. Man, I'm gonna be honest with you. He might have a point right here, bro. Bro, the current, bro, the Emperor in, in 40K, bro... Man, he can't even, bro, he can't even eat lunch. Man, I'll be sour too, bro. Just just let me go. Man, bro, at once, bro. Let me go, bro. They got like a million tubes connected to the body get feeding me energy, bro. That's crazy. With a touch of the fantastic, Sigmar and his people have your back. But I did say most tribes. He got he got a point. Sigmar. He got he got a point. He got a point. Able to be integrated for one reason or another. Let's talk about the one that I like first. Kislev is all of Eastern Europe thrown into a pot and mixed to boiling until it coagulated into one Slavic specialty stew. They live in a frozen hellhole, which is also their country's greatest defense. They wear thick fur pelts. They have winged hussars. They also squat in the middle of a battlefield, because such is the natural state of the Kislevite. And vodka. Even the dwarfs and their genetically ingrained alcoholism respect the drinking skills of a Kislevite. Kislev's job in the setting is to face tank chaos invasions before they get to the Empire of Man, which they do pretty well. Half their cities are torn down in the process, but they're a hardy bunch. They walk into the winter snow, and when everyone occupying their land freezes to death, come back in and rebuild. Their religion is different from the Empire's and they view them as weak southerners, but the two nations are still staunch allies. Mostly because when the forces of actual hell are your neighbors, anyone else is gonna be a good friend. They're led by the Tsar 
Tsar or Tsarina of Kislev, because GW was worried you wouldn't understand which region this place is based off of. Many times, and indeed the last one before the world blew up, this was an ice witch, a handy person to have running your country when a raging blizzard is considered a mild day. You still can't play as Kislev in the old world, thank you GW for that extreme blue balling, but they had some pretty heavy redesigns and a lot of the marketing for the old world did at one point feature Kislev. Here's hoping GW realizes that winged hussars riding bears is something people are interested in. Shame that sentence needs to be said. I don't know why anyone would ever need to be told that. Bleat. These are those people who have sex with horses. When Sigmar was uniting everyone, they refused to join him. Because obviously, they were too good to join him. Did they have some super special magical secret, or a technology that could let them surpass the fledgling empire, or some other race in the hole? No, but they copied the elves' homework and are French, so they decided they were too good to sh- I knew it was the French. I knew it was the French. Hey, 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 as, as are we, as are we horse, as are we horse. See, this is what I'm saying. At the, bro, 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 I knew the French people was crazy. And, and listen, and if you're a French person, bro, I'm sorry. Listen, you know what? I'll make an exception. If you're a French person watching my videos, I'm not talking to you, but I'm talking about everybody else. This is diabolical. You going crazy with, with horses is absolutely crazy. Back up with a future god and went it alone. Bretonia looked at but if you're cool French and you watching my videos, making, I'm not talking about you, bro. Nation and a genre that usually gets to the medieval era and then freezes like it's going into cryo sleep and said, no, we will not be doing that. We will be staying as medieval land. It is mandated by the government that technology will not advance, that society will never have any major upheavals, and that everything is just perfect the way it is. It's like Wowzers. that old decree the Pope made that declared crossbows were a blasphemous weapon taken to be an entire society's philosophy. Bretonia is all about knights. Baby knights proving themselves, magical knights defending the realm and saving damsels, knights leading the country to further the goals and interests of the rest of the knights. Imagine King Arthur. That's it. Just imagine King Arthur stretched out to be a whole faction. The in-universe justification is that they saw high elf cavalry and just ran with the concept. Out of universe, it's just King Arthur and every medieval stereotype thrown together. You could, admittedly, say the same thing about the Empire and the Holy Roman Empire, or Kislev in Eastern Europe, but those are eras and places fantasy writers don't usually copy wholesale, so they get a pass from me. Britonia is the land of almost every fantasy setting ever conceived since Lord of the Rings, and it shows. Unfortunately, they can afford to do all of this fantasy stasis, because an elf goddess is playing them like a fiddle. They're the precious Lady of the Lake, also known as the Elf Goddess of Magic, chooses some super special knights to become Grail Knights. They sip from her chalice of bathwater, and when the now Grail Knight emerges, they're like supercharged D&D paladins. Bullets are an inconvenience, their armor is magically toughened, and their mounts never tire. So until the Empire invents the Gatling Gun, they're able to keep being aggressive backwater dickweeds. In older lore they were tolerable, but in modern lore someone must have felt they weren't angsty enough and made them nice and extra oppressive. The peasants are honored if the noble allows them to have three pennies a week week instead of two, ladies who aren't magical are property because medieval times and social mobility is a punchline. I hope you like medieval medicine. The Empire's medicine already isn't that great. Bretonian medicine is the kind of thing that has a 300% fatality rate. And horses. Everyone has a horse. Even the lowliest peasants have a horse. A horse that more often than not eats and lives better than they do. I like horses, but I don't like them that much. If you've ever been to medieval times and made that your entire personality, Bretoni is a good faction for you. Because God is real and hates me, they're also one of the starter factions of the old world, so getting into Warhammer Fantasy nowadays is pound for pound fairly easily done with Bretonia. In all honesty, pick them if you like them. It is on some level cool because for as much shit as I was giving them, we're not picking them. Bland knights. Knights are cool. We're not There's picking them. Every five-year-old wants to be a knight and not a lansknecht. I mean, for God's sakes, you're trying to say that word is difficult. The other army GW has refused to put onto the tabletop despite already having a direct hand in reworking them for Total War. Did you know there's a fully fleshed out Cathayan army book for GW developed? You can't have it because fun's not allowed. This is a shame because Cathay is awesome. Dragons are also awesome. Cathay agrees because they're ruled by immortal dragons who the Cathayans follow at every whim. Fantasy China is a magical place and one of the few places in the entire planet that might not be a terrible one to live in. Every now and again, it does what actual China used to do and implodes, and sure, those ruling dragons get along like all siblings do, i.e. barely at all, but in day-to-day -day life, not a bad place. And it always comes back together after imploding, usually after mommy and daddy dragon come back to kick everyone's heads in until they start behaving again. It is, like I said, just fantasy medieval China. But that is a compliment. You know those terracotta soldiers? What if they were animated by magic and also 100 feet tall? Are you a 40k fan? Imagine if the Primarchs weren't utter morons and failures almost to a man. 
because that's Cathay. Again, for reasons I will never understand, we don't have them yet in tabletop. But Total War does, and by god is it fun to play as Cathay. The Silk Road was prosperous in real life, and it's prosperous in Warhammer. So if slash when they finally come out, prepare to show the world why China was for a good thousand years the most prosperous country on the planet. It's even better here, because this Great Wall has magical dragon ladies guarding it. Oh, Cathay is oh, also wow. near the countries of Nippon, Ind, and Koresh. Nippon is Japan, Ind is India, and Koresh is Southeast Asia. I'm not giving them uh. their own spots because no one cares about them, and I can't bring myself to either. That's it <laughs> wow. for the non-chaotic living humans, but that doesn't mean we're done talking about humans. The next few ones just don't have a heartbeat. Or skin. What? What do you mean by that? These are the bad guys when chaos has taken a break. Imagine Dracula, if you will. Now okay. imagine Dracula if he had a hundred thousand strong army of zombies, skeletons, lesser vampires, and pretty much anything else that you could find at a spirit Halloween. The total history of the vampires stretches back thousands of years, but for the purposes of this video, we're only going to go back a few hundred. We go to a fella named Vlad von Karstein, because if you haven't caught on yet, this setting is allergic to subtlety. He showed up to the very on-the-nose empire province of Sylvania, which was a horrible place to live. It was covered in swamps, the people were dumb and afraid of scary monsters, and because this setting is what it is, they weren't even wrong to be so. When a peasant in real life says the witch made their family ill with the plague, it's baseless superstition. When a peasant in Warhammer says that, there's a good chance they're right. When a Sylvanian peasant <laughs> says that, they are right. Vlad shows up to this province, marries the daughter of the ruling noble to become its next ruler, and despite being a blood-sucking vampire, this place sucked so hard it was a market improvement. Even better, him and his wife Isabella actually loved each other. They had vampire kids like Conrad von Karstein, who oh, was insane no. and liked to twist the heads off of peasants, and Manfred von Karstein, who was the worst. Of course, this wouldn't be Warhammer if everyone was just nice and peaceful, True. so one day Vlad had a brilliant idea. What if he was the emperor? He could live forever and usher in an eternal age of prosperity, mostly for vampires, but for some of the people too. So he tried to become the emperor at gunpoint. Zombie point more like, but 100,000 zombies is a lot more effective than most Renaissance age guns were. He failed, but the damage was done. Him, his wife, and their children spread vampirism across the empire. Now Sylvania is barely even considered a part of it, and everyone does their best to Oh, because he wanted this to be emperor. This is probably a bad move. That's every crazy. Every decades, some vampire likes to try their hand at raising a massive undead army to take over the empire with. They all fail, but they're very murderous. Them failing means the empire's population only drops by 20% instead of 100%. Just watch the first episode of Castlevania if you somehow haven't for what it's like when the midnight aristocracy goes to war. There's a lot of vampires to choose from, though, to get your specific undead needs satisfied. The Von Karsteins are the classic vampires, who vaunt to suck your blood and rule over the night. The Lamians are a vampire KGB. Oh, I want her. Works in pretty much every yeah, I want her. The planet. Except Lustria, probably. Yeah. The lizards don't take kindly <laughs> to that sort of thing. The Strigoi are what happens if your average Florida resident became a vampire, the Necrox are evil wizards, and the Blood Dragons are a heavy metal album cover. If you thought it was kick-ass when Dragons and the forces of hell to wow. wreak havoc on the living, you'll love the vampire counts. But I did mention that some of the undead don't have skin, and vampires usually have that at least. For those fellas, we need to go further south. Tomb Kings. Ancient Egypt. Ancient Egypt. Ancient Egypt. You now understand the basics of the Tomb Kings. Yeah. Once upon a time, thousands of years in the past, oh, the lands of Nehekara were prosperous. Is that they King Tut? They had regular contact with their gods, magical constructs to defend themselves with, and when they had a good king like Setra, they would sometimes go on to conquer half the world. Then a fella named Nagash was born. He's awful. This man was a monster through and through. He's really smart, though. Smart okay. enough to capture dark elves and force them to teach him dark magic, which usually humans can't do. Smart enough to invent necromancy with what he learned. Smart enough to overthrow his brother, the king, and take over most of the land with his undead forces. And he's also quite powerful with his magic. He was eventually overthrown and cast into the desert where he died, but he invented necromancy. Death is a suggestion for him such as his power. When he inevitably came back, he discovered someone had stolen his research notes and used them to make vampires. He made those vampires his generals, and no, they didn't have a choice in the matter, and then decided of course ruining they this did. with undead wasn't enough. So he formed a plan to kill everyone in the region at once, resurrect every corpse on the planet, and take over the world with his World War Z undead army. Part one of the plan went off without a hitch. It was only through the intervention of the Skaven, who I promise you will Bro, what love, is and the last living people? dude in the region, which kept most of part two from happening. Then everyone in Nehekara promptly stood back up, realized their hearts were no longer beating, but they were still standing, and things got messy. Oh, imagine no. Game of Thrones before it became horrible, with all the political fighting over who gets to be king. Now imagine Game of Thrones if every single person who was ever the rightful king was now alive at the same time fighting over what was their throne. Not they believed it to be their throne, 
or they wanted it to be their throne. Oh, no. It was the throne they sat on once upon a time. Oh, snap. Oh, okay, wow. So you have, like, all... Okay, that's like, for example, even if you didn't get that, for example, that's like... That's like all the presidents of the United States, like, all coming back all at once. And they're like, oh, no, like, you know, I'm the president. And then one guy's like, no, I'm the president. And then Barack Obama's like, oh, no, nah, bro, I'm the president. Like, I get, okay, I get it. I get Time. it. And also they can respawn. I get and it. also, also, most common people were mindless undead skeletons who had the flesh flayed from their bones with the desert winds and could only follow basic orders. Because you guys know like, me. About, if guy if I was the king of this, king. this I'd be the king of this. This stable nation make. Luckily, the priest woke up that Cetra guy who cock slapped everyone until they started behaving again. Who? What? Now slapped everybody? No what? Have skin, have no clear path to achieve immortal bodies to feel with again that they so crave, and no longer have the backing of their very gods. Fortunately for them, death is more of a suggestion. They can still use magic, even if not quite as good of course as it they was can. when the gods were helping, of course and they now they have can. eternity to do whatever they want, as long as it doesn't involve some sort of physical sensation. Sometimes they still fight amongst each other, sometimes they spend their- Can I say one more, like, just one thing, bro? This game is the damn wild, wild west, bro. That's that, that like, like that's what I'm noticing here. Like this game is definitely more free than 40k because 40k has like a, 40k has like a lot of lore and like and like and like a lot of uh, and like a lot of like you know th like connections and stuff like that, bro. But like, bro, fantasy is the wild, wild west, bro. Like that that's literally what I'm catching on to because because this is crazy. Like a guy can die, but then he can come back and use his magic to do this, and then like it, it, it's it's just. It, bro, it's literally all over the place, bro. KSI. Newfound immortality, pursuing whatever hobbies they want, and sometimes they sail all the way from Egypt to Sweden and burn half of it to the ground because someone stole their hat. And on the rarest of occasions, a tomb queen will tell a strapping young lad that if they still had functional genitals, she'd fuck him so hard the experience would kill him. They're... I'm trying to see what that's like. <laughs> Very fun. They're true neutral to the core. Some of them want conquests, some of them just want to find new hobbies. Some hate the living out of jealousy, some don't care either way as long as they serve, and some go out of their way to find human members to recruit for their court because it reminds them of what they've lost. If you can think of a motivation, there's a tomb okay, king I'm that sorry, has it. It's a very simple thing to know if the tomb kings are for you or not. Do you like the mummy? Do you like ancient Egypt? Have you ever wondered what it'd be like if the Sphinx came to life and started crushing people like Godzilla? Tomb Kings are perfect for you then. And hey, look at that. They're the other starter faction for the old world. Now you can get into fantasy proper without people like me dismissively calling you a horse molester. So now we can leave this region of the world and indeed Brother, humanity. Brother, would you come, bro? I have forgotten four human nations that deserve at least a little bit of credit. Shit. Uh, tell us Italia okay. is Italy during medieval slash renaissance Italy. times, so it's thousands of city-states smushed into one country. Bye bye. It's right next to the Skaven capital. There are worse places to live. Estalia is Spain without the colonial empire. Both of these places say they're the first civilized nation in the old world, which the empire disputes. The border princes are the land of whatever the hell you want it to be. It is an excuse to make your own homebrew army, and they fight orcs more than anything. Most of the people there are either fleeing from the empire, leaving the empire in a futile attempt to make it big, and petty nobles. Araby is exactly what you think it is. Turn Aladdin into a war game faction, but only a background faction. And if you think that's me being dismissive of it, do please read about Sultan Jafar's military campaign against the old world. It's actually got advanced medicine, science, and magical practices and theories, but I can guarantee the only thing you're going to remember about this place is Sultan Jafar. We're gonna start by clumping all the elves together, because their backstories are all very interconnected. Don't worry, they'll each get their own time to shine. Once upon a time, there were just elves. The first species created by the old ones to fight chaos, they were made to be elves. Arrogant, long-lived, and short of the slan, they're the best wizards around. Then chaos descended, the old ones pissed off, and the elves had no idea what the hell to do. Eventually, a cool elf named Kalidor made a magical vortex, the chief cool elf, Anarian, grabbed a cursed sword that killed a whole lot of demons, and then everything cooled down a bit. Anarian disappeared, but they elected a new king, so all was okay. His children with his first wife even showed back up to be a bloodline of legendary heroes, though they're also cursed because of that sword. Then an Aryan's second wife told their son Malekith that he should be king, convinced him with her boobs because family trees can be shaped like Christmas wreaths if you don't mind being a freak, and a civil war broke out. Malekith walked into a sacred fire. Y'all fighting over boobies? Are we serious? Yo, and the, yo, the son, but the mama showed the son the boobies. 
Yeah, Fanny's is a wow, wow, west. To prove his worth, whereupon their chief god lit him on fire. Him and his mother kept trying to take over the home continent of Ulthuan. They nearly unmade it when they realized they couldn't, and then the newly formed Dark Elves were forced off of it to go live in Canada. The High Elves, those who stayed behind, once again got to rebuild the shattered remnants of their home. At least they still had their firm friendship with the dwarves, that's a good thing. Oh, wait, that got ruined too. But don't feel too bad, the High Elf King ruined that one for them himself by being the worst. That one wasn't an unfortunate tragedy, it was a self-imposed unfortunate tragedy. The dwarfs and the high elves fought fantasy World War I, and it was pretty miserable for everyone involved. Picking a victor is sort of meaningless because both groups were pretty thoroughly wrecked by the event, and the high elves had to return home when the dark elves began the first of many, many, many invasion attempts to retake Ulthuan. Some high elves didn't go home and sheltered in a magical forest called Athel Lorin instead. Now we have our third group of elves, the wood elves. The Wood Elves are the easiest of the subgroups to explain. They sit in their magical forest and are insane. Sometimes people walk into the magical forest. It's safe to assume that unless stated otherwise, they do not come back out of the magical forest. Sometimes even if you come out of the magical forest, you find that a thousand years have passed since you entered, and every single one of those years catches up with you as you age to dust within minutes. Aside from that though, your first instinct might be that these are stupid, uninspired, lame D&D Wood Elves who love nature and harmony and trees. And in fairness, they do love all those things. It's just that these trees are 50 feet tall, mobile, have a craving for the suffering of mankind, and the Wood Elves will invite peasants to feast to fatten them up for the forest spirits. They don't give a rat's ass about the outside world aside from how it might affect their perfect little lives inside the forest. There are a few scattered enclaves of them across the world that are a bit friendlier, but the general motivation of the Wood Elves is getting other people to get the hell off of their lawn. And when the lawn can come to life and devour you alive, it's a pretty easy task to do that. They also gaslight the Bretonians into thinking their goddess is an elf one, although as it turns out later on, the extent of the elven gaslighting goes even further beyond their understanding. They're led by the avatars of two of the elf gods, naturally the ones that are focused on nature, because wood elf. The king likes to rampage across Bretonia every now and again for funsies, and the queen sometimes says don't do that, sometimes doesn't care, and sometimes encourages it when she's in a feisty mood. They're not my thing, truth be told, but I can respect the idea of wanting to be left alone for all eternity. So if you too cringe inside a little bit whenever you get a text message or a discord DM, these guys might be for you. The high elves are the- I'm gonna keep it honest with you. I don't know who that is. Man, the queen of whatever, but she could be my queen. The ones that stayed on Ulthuan and remained much the same throughout. And like I said, the old ones sure as hell made them to be elves. Long lived, magical, arrogant, and because they live for thousands of years, they're real good at what they do. Some of their swordsmen have been practicing for so long that they take into account the weight of their eyelashes when they swing. You're not beating that. And sure enough, the history of the High Elves is the history of them sailing out from their homeland to go stop most of the problems the world faces. They taught humanity how to use magic properly, they keep excess magic from saturating the world, and they have a habit of showing up just as they're needed to stop things from getting completely out of hand. There's a High Elf who destroyed orc warbands that have been rampaging since the dawn of time and was so good at it that he gave the entire elven race a reputation amongst the Greenskins for being good fighters. All of this because a fat goblin burned down his house. And of course, Teclas my beloved. Is there a 10,000 strong army of orcs, dark elves, or worse bearing down on you? Well, with a wave of his staff and a flick of his wrist, there is now a new crater. He's a real cool guy like that, and he's not even that arrogant. The flip side to balance this glazing session I've just done is that they do actually have weaknesses to go along with all that. They reproduce slowly, and in a war game setting, that's the mark of death. Every death in battle is a hindrance, although at least compared to 40k, they aren't outright dying. They're on the watch list for being endangered rather than being endangered outright. And magic being so innate to them means that when something with it goes wrong, they feel it and are affected by it more acutely than most. Like when their magical queen is sad. Their entire homeland's climate is tied to her emotions. And like any living being that isn't a psychopath, she is sad when a great amount of her people die. So when Malekith decides today is as good a day as any to get a million people killed trying to retake his homeland again, it it really sucks to live in the same country as her. They're also physically frail, which isn't the biggest weakness in the world, but you'll definitely notice it. Oh, so they're done. Wait a minute. So she like, wait, so she controls the climate with her. Oh, Lord Jesus. The thing is, bro, she's a woman, right? So we all know a girl's emotions, man. They, bro, those things go up high, low, high, low. Oh, man. What them things, bro? It, bro, bro, the human. <laughs> Bro, the human, <laughs> bro, the people that live in her town, bro, man, bro, they, bro, man, they thawing, bro, they, bro, they, they are thawing and unthawing, bro, thawing, bro, freezing up and unthawing, bro. That's that's literally what they're doing. That's crazy. 
That's ludicrous. Bro, man, bro, I'm moving out immediately, bro. I got to move to England at that point. But an orc is bearing down on him. And That's also got a crazy. Species -wide depression Think about it. Going That's crazy. When you live functionally forever, Wait, you is my mic on? to get a real feel for what the world is like. And as it turns right, so out, okay. this world kind of sucks. They just don't have time to recuperate from any other constant Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th this the world, world is blind. danger, the high elves sail out to fix the issue, and then the world is immediately in danger again. Add on to that some more standard elven weaknesses, like their old age, meaning they don't always adapt to new things well, and you've got a race that has a bit of a deadline attached to it. Mankind is inventing guns, tanks, and more, and the elves think the bow and arrow remains the height yeah, of the Yeah, yeah, they world is blind. To their credit, though, they're damn good with that bow and arrow, especially when it's a magical lightsaber bow and arrow. And dragons. That's the high right. elves are best friends of almost every dragon that isn't from Cathay. Dragons are scary in a fight, and let's be honest with ourselves. If a dragon declared your hometown to be the best thing ever and made sure to always visit and help out when it was in trouble, you'd have an ego the size of Mount Everest too. Overall, if you like True. elves, you'll like these guys. Even if you don't like elves or only associate Warhammer's elves with the Eldar, the High Elves' ability to actually put their money where their mouth is might win you over. And if nothing else, there's an elf character named Aletha Nar who skins Dark Elves alive because he just hates them that much. And his Yo, what a menace! He had pointy ears and special forces training. Hard to get more unelven than that guy. Speaking of ego, though... Uh-oh, the Dark the Elves. typical elven arrogance. Or if you're not a big fan of the race, elven racism. Now jack it up to the logical extreme endpoint of the concept so that they don't only think they're the best, they think of all other races as vermin that should either serve them as oh. slaves, be hunted for sport, or outright eradicate. Get rid of them. Get rid of them. Mm -mm. Get rid of them. We don't do that. Listen, we do not do that over here, bro. That little uh -uh, racism, all that stuff, man, we don't do that over here. They gotta go. Mm -mm, they gotta go. Hey, 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 we all must work as as a team to get rid of this one right here. Bro, why is it like bro in Warhammer, bro? What's up with the with the with the dark um bro? What's the team called? It's like the dark team or whatever. And like the uh Warhammer, whatever, bro. They're like the worst like people ever. They be like, you know, bro, they'll like torture you and like you know, um, uh, you know, like the fruit that's green and purple, they gon' you know grape you know like that stuff like bro we did i, I just reacted to it like literally the other day bro it's like the dark elder no no dark bro it's a dark something bro it was the worst thing i've ever heard in my life why is it bro what's up with the dark like why does every single evil demonic team start with dark like it like in this in this franchise bro it, it's crazy Gated. welcome to nagaroth friends it only goes downhill from there nagaroth hammer north america sucks it's home to the Dark Elves after they got kicked out of their old home. Why well, gotta be North America? Is either a frozen hellhole, a desert hellhole, or a frozen hellhole bordering actual hell. There's something called the Altar of Ultimate Darkness inside of this place. Do you think anyone that lives here is gonna be nice? Sure enough, the Dark Elves aren't nice. There used to be some human tribes that lived in Nagaroth, and then the Dark Elves killed or enslaved them all. They have wow. cities built into mountains that use as ships to raid and enslave others. They kidnapped high elf children to raise as dark elves, and the entire society looks like what would happen if every single Decepticon was Starscream. Murder and treachery are only illegal if you get caught, and if you're powerful enough, not even then. They're led by Malekith and his mother Marathi, the same two elves who formed the Dark Elves 10,000 years prior. Oh. Marathi is kind of just always awful, but sometimes if you squint real hard, Malekith can almost kind of, sort of a little bit resemble a noble elf hero he once was. No, then he does I don't see things that. like instituting the elven god of murder as the head of the Dark Elf pantheon, uses demons as auxiliaries when he invades Ulthuan, and starts the Warhammer fantasy triangle slave trade. In spite of failing to retake Ulthuan every time he tries, he's a damn powerful wizard and warrior both. He's just Darth Vader, actually. He's even got the suit of armor that helps keep him alive because he was severely burned. And who can forget his mommy issues? Although I don't think Anakin ever piped Bro, his this... mother, so a little bit different there. There Wowzers. is no height of cruelty that Dark Elves don't aspire to. Acting nice gets you killed because it clearly means you're weak. Admitting you're a bit what? tired or injured gets you killed because if you were strong, you wouldn't be injured. So clearly you're weak and someone else more fitting should take your spot. They don't have as many dragon allies and the ones they do are corrupted by dark magic. So they just grab whatever monstrosity they can find in the Midwest and put it in chains until it's time for bed. Oh my goodness gracious. This is abysmal. Yo, they really got... Bro, they, bro, they, bro, they really... Bro, this is... This, this is... This, this is representing America? Well, this is North America. So, uh, yo, so, so, hey, you Canadians and, 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 and you, and bro, to the Canadians, bro, and, and to the Mexicans, y'all not safe either. 
Y'all are not safe either, okay? It, this is this is uh, North America too. So yes, cool, I'm American, but guess what? You Canadians, that's above me. You're not safe either. This is you too. This is you too. Don't try to, oh, well, yeah, I told you America was evil. Yeah, th th this is actually America in real life. No, 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 no. He said North America. He didn't say uh, just plain America. He said North America. Guess what? You're in North America too, buddy. So all you Canadians, uh, yeah, you're, yeah. Yeah, bro. Yeah, you're 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 in this too. It's not just me because I'm American. No, you're with us too. And yo, and, and, and to the Mexicans down there, you're with us too. Don't don't try to run away now. No, no, no. You're with us too. Okay, we're all going down. What are we what are we talking about? But, but this is crazy though. I'm gonna be honest with you. Much like their cousins in space, if you find you're about this to be crazy. captured by them, it's probably best to just off yourself. They may not have quite as exotic measures of torturing you, but they make up for it with a real go-getter attitude in the field of human Dang. rights violations. There's a holiday called Blood Night. The cult of the god of murder goes around and kidnaps people to murder. They steal elven girls to be trained as witch elves like them, and they throw elven boys in a cauldron of boiling blood. If they survive, they get trained as an assassin. I don't think a concrete statistic has ever been given, but you can assume that not many oh people survive god. this. Throw it away. If you like being edgy, Throw it away. ironically, or because you think suffering is inherently deep, you'll like the Druki. I can already feel no, the I like a Druki. going down, though, from how long I've been talking about elves. So how about we move to their polar opposites? The dwarfs. Elves are posh, regal, and always at least a little bit uptight. Dwarfs are brash, to the point, and consider sobriety a sin. While the elves of Warhammer have a few things that make them stand out a bit from the standard elf template, the dwarfs of Warhammer could fit in just about any setting with minimal issue. They like drinking, they like mining, they hate orcs, and getting them to compliment non-dwarf craftsmanship is like pulling teeth. Oh, so they just paying bills. So they just going to work every day. Oh. Hey, listen, they mining during the day to get a little beer, you know, to, 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 to kick off the night. I mean, listen, I don't drink or whatever, but listen, bro, if you know, you're going to work, you know, you come in, you go into the bar, sipping on some beer, you, you, you go back to the wife. I like that. Yo, shout out to the dwarves, bro. From Sorry, the dwarves. They hate magic both because it's weird elf nonsense and because when the old ones made the dwarves, they made them so opposed to magic, their mere presence makes it not work properly. They love mining and mountains because that's just what dwarves love. That's the job. They do have three things that make them stand out, though. First is that it's pronounced dwarfs, not dwarves. Second is that these dwarfs are industrious little fellas. They've discovered oil and how to use it, and with it make helicopters, trains, and more. While humanity has galleons with cannons and the elves have either magical dragon ships or city-sized slave ships, the dwarfs have ironclads, submarines, and aircraft These carriers. boys got yachts! They hate using them because no proper dwarf would ever be happy with anything but solid earth under their feet, but they True. have them. They're slow to change to the point that anything less than 500 years old gets you complained at if you suggest using it, but at least some of them understand that the 20 barreled artillery piece is nice to have even if their ancestors might not approve the oh. second is that these dwarfs are the embodiment of the word spite they're bitter that the other races won't just conform to proper dwarf ways they hate orcs and goblins for ruining their once great cities they hate the elves for that war they got into thousands of years ago a war that ultimately started mind you because the dwarf diplomat forcibly had his beard shaved there were some other factors leading up to it but that was the final straw the average dwarf doesn't know about the lizardmen much but they'd certainly hate them too if they knew the slan were involved in shifting some mountain ranges around that destroyed a whole lot of dwarf holds have you ever wronged a dwarf into the book you go Never. the great book of grudges that is every single thing that is in some way wrong the dwarf race is put down in there most dwarf holds have their own personal ones for slight against them in particular some dwarfs have their own personal book even if they don't they have photographic memory if you've wronged them they'll remember oh. it doesn't even need to be on purpose a human town once shorted the dwarfs two coins by accident in exchange for some construction work the dwarf sent an army and killed everyone in it if this happens never mind i don't like dwarfs no more never mind <laughs> Never mind, I thought they was cool. Never mind. Never mind. Do you when you try to seek some sort of retribution? Never mind. Insane idea I take it back. <laughs> they seem to have. You're going back in the book for any harm you might cause wow. doing it. We they just get written up like the principal. Huh? Entire military campaigns fighting wars to right grudges, and naturally anything that happens to them during these campaigns leads to more grudges. I thought they were which cool. Which leads to them trying to right those grudges, which causes more grudges. You know that saying about digging two holes when you set out for revenge? Yeah. Two holes is not nearly enough for the Dowie. And wow. And you forget the Slayers. Let's say you're a dwarf man. and you committed some seriously dishonorable action. Maybe your negligence led to other dwarfs getting killed. Maybe you fled at the height of a battle. Or maybe you just lost a bit too much money on a bet or had your beard shaved against your will. In any of those cases, there's only one option available to you. 
Kill yourself. Take the Slayer Oath and die in battle. There's no redeeming yourself in any way but death. There's funerals held for Whoa. those who take the Slayer Oath Whoa. and even leave to find something to kill them. Because for all intents and purposes, <laughs> they've died and the message just hasn't gone Wowzers. yet. If you want some great books that explore Slayers, Dwarfs, and the Warhammer world, read Gotrick and Felix. YouTube, he's talking about the game, by the way. I, I, Do it. YouTube, I, he's talking about the game, by the way. Like, you know, like, do that to yourself in the game. Not like in real life. Obviously, he's not saying that in real life. He's... He's talking about the game and stuff, YouTube. I, I just had to clarify that, because, you know. Now, while the dwarves certainly have their work cut out for them, they've got some good stuff that makes them cool regardless. They can't use magic like wizards, so instead they grab it by the balls and hit it with a hammer until it works perfectly how they want it to with their runes. The longer their beards are, the more respected they are. And there's even a military unit called Longbeards. Wow. If the beard can touch the floor, they get equipped with some of the best armor dwarf money can buy. They've got the finest weapons in the setting, the finest armor in the setting, and while they all may because be your beard's all on? hell, if they catch you, it's game over. If you like facial chair, hate change, and despise other people for being different, take a look at the dwarfs. Chaos uh -oh. Imagine dwarfs without that silly grudge ideology. You've committed a wrong and have to make up for it, but you can right it without causing your own death. And what's more, you can properly use magic, fireball and lightning and all those other lovely spells you can think of. Without the shackles of tradition or even their own biology holding them back, they can produce wonders of both magic and industry. Unfortunately, they replace stupid grudges with one of the most horrific slaver cultures around, and they forego tradition to worship actual demons and dark gods. Oh and being able to use my, magic bro, no, bro, there's not even a faction that I can like in this game. There's not even, there's not even one. There's not one faction that I can be like, oh, this is amazing. Let's join them. Like, bro, we're, like, why is everybody so, like, upset and mad? Like, bro, drink a coffee or something, bro. This is ridiculous. Yo, 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 I'm going to be honest, bro. Like, obviously, nothing comes close to my salamanders. But, bro, this, this is preposterous, bro. Everybody's so mean and, and, and ugly and, and just rude and just slave, slave, demon, demon. Like, bro, like, what? what? Necessarily Dang. Thing, because it eventually turns them into stone statues. These they are should the be, man. Turn them all into stone statues. In turn them all. Human followers of chaos can only dream of being. Saying they take the best of the dwarfs is Dang, sort of overstated. Bro, like, because the best of the dwarfs is their willingness to stand by both the letter and spirit of the Where's the happy poop like, bro? No Smile. What. Plus, like, while their incredible stubbornness does hold them back from a lot of progress they can make and gets them into some stupid conflicts, it also means they're not only going to accomplish whatever they set out to do, but always stand by your side. If the dwarfs say they're gonna help you, they're gonna help you. And if a human, dwarf, and elf are all fighting together, the dwarf is gonna be the last one to break. The Chaos Dwarves take these traits and have molded them in a way that is best suited to being an evil bastard. The craftsmanship of the dwarves makes weapons, yes, but also architectural wonders and genuine pieces of art so good it can make a man weep. The Chaos Dwarves make hell factories that are 2,000% efficient and make the most brutal weapons Chaos has to offer. They take the runic magic of the dwarves and use it to bind demons into their weapons and armor. The demons aren't happy with this, but the Chaos Dwarves are still dwarfs. They're so good at what they do that more often than not, the demons are powerless once the dwarfs get their hands on them. They aren't numerous, and they aren't even terribly expansionist, but when the Chaos Dwarves do go to war, there's nothing that can truly equal it. The finest weapons and armor just like the dwarfs, only now bolstered with the power of Hellspawn. They even have the closest thing to a nice Chaos God to worship, which gives them all sorts of benefits. Hashut. Sure, he's called the Father of Darkness, and is the God of Tyranny, and is overall exactly as evil as you'd expect from that, but he doesn't screw the dwarfs over. They want power, he likes it when tyrants are in power, so in exchange for them using their dwarf talents to enslave others, he gives them power. The most commonly seen use of Chaos Dwarfs is his artillery crewman for the Hell Cannon unit, as well as frequently selling Chaos Lords weapons and armor. This is because of both their isolationist nature, and because they don't really have an army. They do have legacy rules for the old world, and they have had an army, unlike Cathay, but their status as properly playable is a bit all over the place. Still though, if you don't mind legacy rules and finding either old minis or third party ones to use, you can feel the Chaos Dwarf army. So if you like the dwarfs but wish they were horrendous in every way possible, check out the Chaos Dwarfs. Just get used to people calling them Chorfs. Not the most dignified nickname, that one. Okay. Or the Ogres were the last race the old ones made before pissing off. 
They're resistant to chaos, tough unlike the elves, capable of changing things up quickly unlike the dwarfs, oh, and are big as boys. vicious and fluid as mankind. Unfortunately, Wowzers. the older ones couldn't quite get them to stop eating everything in sight and never properly finish them before they left, or their homelands for that matter. I can when tell. chaos invaded, the ogres were left unfinished in this state, and many became nomadic after they ate everything in whatever their first homeland was. They also ate the ancestors of the modern day giants, who were a whole lot smarter, wiser, and powerful than the inbred alcoholic morons that giants are in Warhammer today. Oh Things were made goodness. worse for them when they decided to migrate into Cathay because the Dragon Emperor dropped a meteor on their homeland and blew it up. Wow. Now they had nowhere to return to, were still really hungry, and that meteor made a big hole called the Great Maw. It's a big hole in the ground with teeth, and the ogres throw food and people into it to get magical powers. They also worship a volcano and drink its lava to get fire magic. Neither of the past two sentences were made up by me. I love this setting. They're vaguely based on Mongolia, but I don't think Genghis Khan ever ate an entire city's population. Killed everyone in it, sure, but I don't think there was... Nah, man, he wasn't, man. Genghis Khan, man, he wasn't eating nothing. Yeah, you know what I mean. Hey, hey that man Genghis Khan, man, he, he was... Man, he was knocking something else down. Yeah, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, I know. You know too. Ask cannibalism. The ogres, though, he, he exactly was going crazy that. on something else. Everything about them revolves around food. Their social hierarchy is in large part determined hey. by how fat. Hey, me and you, we might be brothers. <laughs> you are. They have a race of goblinoid hey. slaves called Yeah, he was going Nobblers. crazy. They equal parts pack mule, assistant chefs. I probably got snacks. eight, eighty They're different to eat sisters. Other races' food and or the other races. One of the most common ways you'll see ogres around is as mercenaries, because while they are stupid, they're smart enough to realize being a mercenary means you can travel the world sampling all the food you can find, and you'll even get paid for the trouble. The gut is a sacred part of an ogre's body, to the point that oftentimes it's the only part of an ogre they keep protected with armor. That might sound stupid, but consider they're twice as tall, four times as wide, and eight times as heavy as a normal person, and can reliably defeat demon invasions. The closest thing to an ogre's central government is Greece's gold tooth tribe that sets up toll booths. They, they, they need to lay off the Wendy's. The Man, they are Aside eating from that, though, up. They can be literally anywhere. They're happy to sell their services to all races, and sometimes they can even become corrupted by chaos. Oh, they're like the merchants, resistant basically. To chaos, corruption, and immune to it are different things, especially if they willingly join for one reason or another. Sometimes they even embrace the cultures of the places they go willingly. An ogre isn't exactly going to fit oh. in an imperial noble's party, but are you going to tell the nine-foot-tall slab of muscle with a racial reputation for eating people that he's being a bit of a slob? Oh, never no. mind. No, you aren't. And if Never someone mind. does, everyone at your fancy dinner party now has some rather gruesome entertainment, while your ogre guest has dessert. Demons of the chaos. chaos demons are pretty similar between fantasy and 40k. They're all servants slash bits of a greater god, sufficient yeah. concentrates as a magic and allow them to show up, and yeah. when the wizard messes up their spell, they can manifest that way too. They want yep. to tear down the mortal world and bring ruin of to course. the realms of man, of elf, course. and dwarf, all that good stuff you can expect of demons. The only real difference is how they came about. In 40k, all the chaos gods have birthdays. Slanesh has the most concrete one, but the other ones at one point very much came into existence. Warp timey wimey cop out garbage means they've also always existed, but I don't care about that. In fantasy, they have always existed, though. They're just evil gods who exist to ruin stuff. It's how it works. Chaos came about when they broke through the portals on each of the planet's poles when the old ones overused them to ferry materials and magic to their burgeoning creations. Other than that, pretty much the same, if with a small bit more emphasis on their positive aspects. Only a small bit, though. Korn still likes war, Nurgle still likes disease, Zinch still likes scheming, and Slanesh still likes degeneracy. Same <laughs> demon units, same greater demons. Hell, most of the named demons are the same. Yep. Where they really shine and differentiate between settings isn't their followers. Let's get GW's least favorite child out of the way first. Who is the that? The Beastmen are a cross between beasts and men. Greasemen? Being born of chaos itself, the Dark Gods don't need to bribe them with gifts to ensure their worship. Unfortunately for them, this means the Beastmen rarely, if oh, ever, beast. get any gifts from the Gods. They know they'll always have their worship, so they get the scraps the proper chaos warriors get. Given that one theory of how they came about is man and beast getting a bit too friendly with each other, I don't feel too bad for them. Don't let that fool you, though. While the nations of men consider them to be a nuisance for all but the most isolated towns and the dwarves view them similarly, the Wood Elves know the true danger they represent. 
In the forest of the world, millions of them lurk, and when they go to war, entire swaths of the country are trampled underneath their hooves. They defile nature with their every step, and won't stop their savage crusade until the civilized peoples of the world exist in a constant state of being hunted by their bestial overlords. At least, that's what we're told in between lore blurbs of them being butchered like the cattle they look like. For the love of God, at least the Elder are powerful on the tabletop more often than not. The Beastmen usually suck on tabletop and in the lore. I'm trying to be a hype man for the wow. factions here, but while I wasn't for Petonia because I hate them, I'm not for the Beastmen because I pity them. For what it's worth Dang. though, they are incredibly dangerous to the average person in this setting. Villages at the frontier of almost every faction are regularly Dang, in so they really butt. Leaders, and when they gather in force, they'll be wiped off the map at a moment's Dang, notice. Dang, they're horrible! And since they're all part animal, they have incredibly sharp senses. If you get in a fight with one while you're traveling, it's already game over. You can probably take that one on, but the 20 or so more beelining it in your direction oh, because they dang. have a fight is a different story. Their booty the juice. beastmen are a savage race to the point that things like intact walls drive them to frothing rage, such as their hatred for civilization. All they do in their free time is get into brutal fights amongst each other, is... sometimes involving one challenging another for a position in the hierarchy, but usually just to assert dominance or for fun. Hunt people and drink. They do have some forms of worship for the Chaos Gods, and their shamans both help construct effigies and are actually referred by other beastmen as something above their common squabbling, but for the most part, they're every stereotype of barbarian squashed into one. Aside from those shamans, they have no desire to form their own culture, civilization, or cities. They just want to hunt like they're the just killers. They the they're just may killers. Be a bit of an acquired taste, but for what it's worth, I don't think I've ever seen people address beastmen players with anything but some measure of respect. Well, the beasts of chaos are no more, the OG beastmen of fantasy have returned the tabletop. If you like the idea of being the savage force of nature that just wants to ruin all the while being backed by the dark gods, the Beastman might be for you. Just, uh, don't expect to win all that often. Part of the respect Beastman players get is for sticking with an army that Games Workshop seems to hold in utter contempt. Warriors of Chaos. I'm incredibly biased, but I do not care for the motivations sorry, of most of the traitor legions. They strike me as like listening to a story about me and my siblings not getting along when we were kids. Which I'm sure is at least partly intentional, but that's not the kind of motivation I want for why someone sold their soul to the forces of hell. At least not on a faction-wide level. By contrast, let's look at the Warriors of Chaos motivations for He sold his soul chaos. for what? I'd say there's two blanket ones you can say. The reasonable one is that they live in the barren, icy lands of Norska. Aside Ooh. from the southernmost regions, permafrost covers the whole land. No crops can be they grown. They live in Iceland. Animals are around to hunt. Because of their proximity to the North Pole, where the realm of chaos intersects with reality, a lot of those animals are heavily mutated, if not outright demonic. A lot of these people are also almost explicitly forsaken by Sigmar, as a lot of the ones who live there now are the descendants of the ones Sigmar forced out when he was forming the Empire. With all that in mind, I think it's at least understandable that these people would turn to the Chaos Gods for protection and worship. If the only option of worship is the guy who's all about plague, you might as well hope he's in a good mood and will keep the plague at bay in exchange for a few sacrificed southerners. Wow. The other motivation, while less relatable, is also much more fun. Just wanting to be an evil, powerful overlord. Why do you worship the Dark Gods? Because they give you ultra-powerful cursed armor you can use to give them more sacrifices to gain more power with. Why do you slaughter in the name of the Blood God and all the others? Because it's fun. Who gives a damn about morality? That it's fun! The mistake of being in front of you, so it obviously had to go. If the Blood Dragons are a heavy metal album cover, the Warriors of Chaos are every heavy metal album cover combined into one. Kill for the Dark Gods at every possible moment. Let loose your darkest desires onto the world, because you have oh, the no. These guys are freaking to do so. The Norskins who live in the frozen north. No, these guys are freakazoids. The Freaks. And realm of chaos to become true warriors of darkness. If they're unlucky or unworthy, they'll turn into chaos spawn or demon. Ew. If they're lucky or worthy enough, they'll become mighty chaos lords. And if they're really lucky and get just the right amount of attention from their gods, they can become demon princes of chaos, immortal beings with the blessings of the gods themselves to pillage across the world in their name. Look at this dude. He has four weapons visible alone, and his armor looks like he just grabbed every single bit of scrap metal around and had a demon turn it into something almost coherent to look at. If you want to play the bad guys who revel in being bad guys for the sake of it, the Warriors of Chaos have no equal. But believe it or not, these guys aren't the evilest faction. Skaven. I love the Skaven. Take a rat, make it person-sized, walk on two legs, and fill it with hate. Now let them outnumber everyone else combined by a factor of ten, give them energy weapons and the foulest of magics, and a desire to see everyone else brought low before them. With you like this? Yo, 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 you like this crew? Man, this is a rat crew, man. Man, this is a... Bro, man, 
This is all New York. This whole faction was born and made in New York. That you have the Skaven, and they are truly glorious. Ew. Unlike the Chaos Gods, the Ur God of the Horned Rat has absolutely no positives. His own little territory in the realm of chaos Duh. is the realm of ruin. It sucks, and in there is a greater demon of his for every single Skaven, all of whom also suck. With numbers and power like they have, there's only one reason the Skaven haven't already taken over the world. The thing their god and race embodies more than anything else is the word asshole. They hate the other races for sure. They're petty and spiteful enough that even though they don't have any uses for gold, they mine it solely because it inconveniences everyone else. But they hate each other only a fraction of a fraction less than they hate everyone else. They're also <laughs> all power-hungry morons who are convinced that if they were in charge, they could lead Skavendom to victory. Yeah, and of rats. course themselves to a life of luxury and power. So one will have a plan to defeat a dwarf army, and then all his underlings immediately begin sabotaging each other to look good for the commander, sabotaging the commander to take his place, and then sabotaging themselves because they're just stupid. Dumb. They eat each other for food, the Skaven at the top bully the ones below them, and this lovely form of Reaganomics trickles all the way down to the common clan rat bullying Skaven and slaves because the rat above him bullied him because the rat above him bullied him. Ew. Of course, none of this matters in terms of defeating them. For one, they're rat people. There's a reason the only human inhabited place on Earth that doesn't have rats is Alberta. The Skaven literally breed like rats because they are. In the time it takes you to kill one, they've already given birth to another thousand. In a chapter from a Skaven Ew. character's point of view, the commanding wizard of the Skaven army remarked it was impressive how they managed to pull off a victory despite only outnumbering the enemy four to one. When a four to one ratio is what they consider to be a pretty even fight, you can rest easy knowing there's a lot of rats under your feet. Or don't rest easy. I wouldn't. And of course their technology. Why I should look at my feet? The world. They have nuclear weapons. They burrow under the ground and put them under people or places they don't like, which is what? everywhere and everyone. The only places the Skaven don't have some presence on is Ulthwan, the High Elf home, and Athel Lorin, the Wood Elf home. Is that they can't Antarctica? Get to Ulthwan because it's a floating island continent that doesn't touch the sea floor. There's no ground for them to dig up under through. They can't get to Athel Lorin, meanwhile, because the ground itself is alive and actively hates them for trespassing. They'll send thousands of their slaves and basic soldiers to death in order to slightly soften up the enemy defenses. As far as the Council of Thirteen that rules Skavendom is concerned, a thousand slave rats in exchange for the enemy losing a couple rockets and cannonballs is a positive trade. This is before they start firing at you with magic oh, no, the worst gatling one. guns, throwing poison gas at you, yeah, and lighting the worst you one. on fire with magically powered flamethrowers. Every this is single the worst one, one of those things has the potential to break and kill the operators because the magic rocks powering it are incredibly unstable, and it yeah, just the worst doesn't one. matter to the Skaven. Other Skaven killed are other potential rivals killed, and everyone else they kill is one less obstacle to Skaven domination wow. out of the world. Oh, that magical wow. substance they use to power their weapons is a rock called Warpstone, by the way, and the Skaven covet it above all else. They use it to power pretty much everything that isn't manually powered by treadmills of slave rats. Other uses for it include using it to boost their magical strength, boost their physical strength, as food, and as a cocaine equivalent. Everyone else that touches the stuff either mutates or dies on the spot, and for the Skaven it's nose candy. If they sound goofy, it's because they are, but consider what it's like on the other side of a Skaven invasion. You're walking down the street, things have been a bit rough with the goings on in the town, but nothing that can't be explained by natural causes. Then all you hear is explosions the sounds of the most horrifying mutated monstrosities ever conceived, and right as you turn the corner, all you see is dozens of beady red eyes staring at you with full intent to kill and eat you. And that's if you're lucky. Run. On the other end of things, Run. the are horrifying. There's a lot more. All you're going to see is my booty and elbows. And here's a quick and easy way to know if you like them. If you despise everything about everyone around you, know for a fact you should be in charge of everyone because you're clearly right, and altruism makes you want to curl up and die, you'll like the Skaven. Or uh, I'll, hey, I don't like none of these, bro. A fantasy setting with none of them. Guns, mm -hmm. Magical artillery and nuclear bombs. Hell there no, you no. Too. And I believe that is every major fantasy faction. And a lot of the minor ones. Oh, man. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this long video. Um, hopefully this, you know, this added something to your Friday night. Um, first of all, shout out to everybody who's been watching all the Warhammer videos, man. Again, I'm a newbie. I'm a new booty. Uh, just came through to this new franchise. I think I started this what the late last year um, And you guys have been sticking through watching my re my reactions to like, you know, the cinematic trailers the the the, the gameplays, etc um, and, and now we're here. So thank you guys so much for watching all the videos and stuff like that I don't like any of these factions Warhammer fantasy is it bro. It, it's too free for me, bro. It, bro, it, bro, I feel like every faction is just purposeless. Like they don't have like they don't have a mission. Like 
it's just killing, killing, killing. Now, 40K is, is killing, killing, killing as well, bro. But I feel like there's like a mission. I feel like everybody has a mission in 40K. And Faction, bro, like, I, like everybody is just squished onto like one earth, whatever. And they're in like different parts of like whatever. And like, they're just like attacking each other. It's like the wild, wild west out there. But then whenever it comes to 40K, bro, like they got missions. They got like, like everybody's ambitious, even though some people are evil. Um, but I don't know. I, th I just, I just think that fantasy is just, it's just too wild, wild west. Um, there's no, um, faction that was like, oh my God, amazing. Cool. None of them. Oh, they all evil. They all terrible. Um, throw them all the way. Cause if I, bro, if I had the option, bro. Man, as a matter of fact, bro, I can't lie to you, bro. I'm pressing the red button, bro. That hey, that whole that whole planet gotta go. I'm just keeping eyes, bro. That whole planet gotta, bro, skadoosh, disappear, bro. Is it y'all all gonna work together like a team and fight back, or it's whatever, man? Comment down below. What do you guys think about this? Thank you guys so much for watching all the Warhammer videos, and.